All right. Good afternoon, traders. Thanks for joining and uh, taking your time to check out this week's live webinar. Uh, right off the bat, as always, a quick test of audio and visual. If you can hear my voice and you can see this opening slide, uh, go ahead and type a Y in the chat box for me. All right. Thank you, Kirk. Cool. Okay. seems like everything's coming through all right. Now, um, you guys, just be sure to use that chat to ask any questions throughout the webinar, and we will get to those uh, throughout and mainly after the presentation. Now, most of you should be familiar with my voice by now, uh, but for any first-time viewers, my name is Ty. I'm coming at you guys from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I handle the business development here at Shark Indicators. Uh, I've been doing this for several years now, and we as a company have been involved in the NinjaTrader ecosystem since 2011. Now, on that note, before I pass it off, let's take a quick look at the risk disclosure. Uh, take a minute and look this over. Futures, foreign currency, and options trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. And just to answer the question uh, that I'm sure is coming, uh, this webinar is being recorded. So just look for an email from Ty at Shark Indicators, and I'll get it out to you guys by tomorrow morning at the latest. So uh, a lot of people here should already be familiar with Ferentz and Remick trading systems. And for those of you who are not, I'm going to have Ferentz introduce himself here shortly and get right into today's presentation. So at this point, Ferentz, I'm going to promote you to presenter so you can introduce yourself to some of the shark audience here, and then you can get uh, right into it. Thank you, Ty. It's a pleasure to be here. And let me just try to choose my proper screen. I think that should be the one. I wonder if you can see the first uh, page of my presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says uh, gain momentum with Remick Momentum. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. And welcome, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here today, uh, as always, at the invitation of Shark Indicators, uh, producers of uh, amazing products. And uh, today, I'd like to put our new product, Remick Momentum, in the spotlight and uh, also highlight some other uh, interesting stuff that I think uh, and I hope that you will find uh, useful to your own trading business. So first of all, as uh, many of you already know me, and if not, then let me just say a few words about me. Um, I live in Toronto, been here for 35 years. I was born in Hungary, therefore my um, funny spelling of my name, which just means Frank in English. And uh, you can also see two uh, JPEGs on the front page. As you can see, the Remek Momentum, our new product, uh, is available for both Ninja 7 and Ninja 8, uh, which is, um, I think, uh, quite welcome. And a lot of you have asked to make our products uh, available on both platforms. So here we go. And uh, if I can find the next page, here it is. All right, so a few words about the agenda. Uh, just a very brief introduction of our company and what uh, we're up to here in Toronto and also in Hungary. And then uh, I'd like to tell you more about what the Remex Momentum system is and how it compares to our Remex system, which has been on the market for three, four years. Um, I also want to go into a bit more detail on how Remex Momentum specifically, excuse me, can help you trade better and focus better on your trading business. And uh, last but not least, uh, um, we're launching a new service called the Remek Room next Monday, which I'd like to tell you a little bit about and also invite you to join. There's a seven day free trial. So I'm very excited about introducing that service as well. As always, we're going to answer any questions you may have and we'll have some special offers for in appreciation of your attendance. All right, so as you can see, uh, you can see Toronto in the picture and also see Budapest, which I spent, where I spent two months every year. Um, in both places, I feel pretty much home and I teach at a university, at an American university, actually on a European campus in Budapest. Um, and I teach uh, trading strategy, design and technology in the master's, fi master's of finance program, which I'm very proud of and love to do. And uh, if you read the news today, oh boy, then you know that the university is moving to Vienna. So actually next spring, my classes might have to be in Vienna. That might, uh, that explains the picture of both cities there. 
All right. So, but before um, anything else, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions just to understand better who um, who you guys are in the audience, and I can maybe target what I'd like to show you today a little bit better. So, if I may ask you, could you type uh, a yes in the chat box or the questions box if you have been using our products or if you have heard about Remec? On if, if the Remic products or services are part of your trading activities. Okay, I'm getting three yeses so far. All right, some of you guys have heard about us, and there's another yes. Wonderful, beautiful. Oh, actually, I recognize some of the names. Oh, hi, guys. Uh, it's good to see you in the room. Let me apologize if my voice is a little raspy today. Uh, but uh, uh, I'll do my best uh, audio-wise. Okay, so yes, the next thing I'd like to understand actually is what time frame do you trade? Uh, traditionally, you know, we are grouped into intraday and overnight traders. Some of us do both. And actually, the more we think about it, the more we realize that the boundary between the two is not as sharp as we tend to think so if you could just type in okay right so there's some intraday answers coming oh most answers are intraday okay there's good reasons for trading intraday of course and some potential drawbacks and pitfalls but uh, if you want we can go into more detail about that okay some of you are trading both and I like the answer from Sen. Whatever makes money, that's the right attitude, my friend. And I, I tend to agree with you there. All right. The next thing. So, but bottom line, most of you have answered intraday, which is okay and is good because Remec Momentum can very effectively trade intraday, and actually is able to kind of blur the boundary between intraday and overnight trading. So, what do I mean by that? Let's say, you know, 3.30, 4 p.m., you have the account size, you're in a good trade. There's absolutely no reason to, to necessarily get out of that trade, but just because it's 4.15 Eastern, uh, there might, uh, as you know, statistically, some of you may know that uh, it's actually, it's backed by data that uh, some of the best moves come overnight when the U.S. is asleep. So there are very good and strong reasons for trading overnight. Uh, and uh, even if you don't do that right now, it's always a good idea to research the subject for later, uh, you know, later phases of our trading career. All right. Uh, the next thing I'd like to know and know a little bit more about is what markets or instruments do you trade? I definitely understand you're from many countries in the world. USA futures are right, yes. Very good, the big animal, ES, our favorite, NQ, little jumpy NQ, wonderful. So CL, okay, so mostly I can see US futures, which is uh, is very good news for me because that's what we at Remec uh, basically specialize in. Uh, that's where we think our expertise are based on the past 10 years in the business. Uh, so I'm very glad to see all those familiar instrument codes uh, in the chat box. All right. Uh, we don't currently trade stocks, uh, but of course, with Remec Momentum, you'll be able to trade anything, any instrument that is available in NinjaTrader or available from your uh, data feed. Hi, Soren. Good to hear you. Good to see you in the group. Yeah, you trade the DAX. You're in Europe. Quite understandable. Okay. I think DAX has now a mini version, right, with a little smaller tick size that uh, some of you may be interested in. So check out that uh, DAX product. And also, if you're in Europe or other parts of the world, you know, you might find that the day for you, 9 o'clock in Eastern time, is like 3 p.m. in Europe. So whenever I'm in Europe, it's quite convenient uh, to trade the market after some good coffees uh, at 3 p.m. All right, getting back to what we are here for, uh, I'd like to move on. And uh, before anything else, I'd like to invite you to play a little game with me. It only takes a minute or two, and I hope you will uh, take something something uh, away from it. So here's a little here's a little game. These are the rules. Uh, 
you have to open this door, this little white cabinet, at least once a day. And uh, all the food, let's suppose you're in a desert island or something, uninhabited island, right? and the only, all your only food source comes from this cabinet. So it's serious. And uh, the following happens in random order. One third of the time, you'll find three cans of beans, which you'll take and use. One third of the time, you open the door and nothing happens. You don't take and you don't give anything. And one third of the time, you open the door and two cans are taken away from you. Now, so these are the rules and the order of events is completely random. The results of opening the cabinet is random. Uh, I'm sure many of you can already see the potential parallels with trading. So you'll, you'll know in a second what I'm driving at. Okay. Now, there's only one more important rule. Your stock of cans in your hand cannot be zero at any time. If it's zero, game is over. So my question to you, everybody, would you play this game with me? If I'm the cabinet, let's say, let's say I'm the cabinet and uh, would you play this game? John says no. Actually, quite a few people say no. Some say yes. Okay. Oh, more yeses coming in. All right. There's nothing against no's or yeses. I'm impartial at this point. Uh, okay. So just to recap, okay, think about this again. It's not that difficult, but think 30 seconds. Uh, be quiet if you want. But remember, one third of the time, you find three cans and it's yours. One third of the time, nothing happens. And the last third of the time, you have to give back two. Would you play this game? Yes, Daniel says it's uh, I'm one can up, right? So it's a net gain is one can. Okay, you get one, right? So, okay, a lot of people say yes, which is, I think, the correct answer. And I don't think it's very difficult to figure out which is better for us, yes or no. And uh, if you, if we move to the next slide, uh, let me show you what I'm trying to get here. Here we go. So the question is, how many cans do I have to start with to survive? Remember, my stock of cans cannot be zero at any time. And the distribution of events, of results rather, is random. Okay. So if you want, you can type in an answer. So whatever you guess, um, we're not mathematicians. I'm not expecting a, a, a you know, concrete number, but what do you think? Okay, Daniel wants to start with three cans. All right. So three cans you start with, and then probably James says 10. All right. So, okay. So whatever your choice of cans in your hand, all right. Remember, uh, the results of opening the cabinet will be totally random. But what we know is that based on the law of large numbers, right? Uh, one third, one third, one third. So I'm not going to repeat. And uh, uh, by the way, I'm looking for, thank you for the numbers. Yeah, keep typing in. If you're, if you're good with calculators or you can Google it, whatever you want, uh, just for yourself, for your own sake, think about this number. And I promise to you that uh, it's not time wasted. All right. Okay, so Constantine has an interesting uh, comment there. Market is not random need to be selective with what days. Uh, the market is uh, not random or random. Uh, well, opinions may differ, but we're not talking about a random, we're just a market. We're just talking about the game right now. And the rules of this game in particular are quite set and unambiguous as it were. So, uh, and you, you know, you cannot be selective with the days. You have to open the cabinet at least once a day. You can open it a hundred times a day if it's up to you, but once a day you must open it. Okay, uh, so we have the answers. Uh, let me just say so everybody knows, or maybe you can see the numbers too. Three, ten, two, four, seven, ten, and seven. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for participating. And now let me get to the next stage is this uh 
this is some very smart, and I didn't do this, so I'm not a mathematician myself, I don't claim to be, but I did my research, and uh, these are the numbers, all right? The probable, you see the win-loss ratio, and here we can start to draw parallels with our trading activities. Win-loss ratio, there's a little list there, uh, increasing uh, ratios there, and the probable streaks. Now, that's an interesting thing, because uh, that's uh, if you play the game long enough, and we can think of trading now, if you trade long enough, you will have a, a streak of losers, streak of winners, and uh, it's important to have an idea of, about what probabilistically is likely to happen sooner or later to us as we participate on the markets. So if you look at this, my last question, and then we can, we're going to move on quickly. But um, before we do that, let me ask you, which probable streak? So in this game, where do you think this game fits in? So you see the, 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 the longest probable streak for 30% win-loss ratio or accuracy, right, uh, is 30. And the other end of extremity, 90% would only be 5. So where are we? Where would you put this trade? Could you type in the number for me? All right. Srini says 30, 70, 40%. Somebody says 40%. Okay. Uh, there, I don't see a 40. Uh, I don't see a 70. I'm looking at the streak. So type in the 15. You see, I'm looking for a number on the right hand side. Okay, so 15, let's see, 15, where's 15? I don't see a 15. Okay, 66, I don't, what are you looking at, guys? We're not looking at the same chart. <laughs> okay, so 25, 21, okay, I, I, okay, nine, I got that, okay, good. Now, all right, uh, I'm not gonna drag this on too long, but please look at the left-hand side now, okay? So the win-loss ratio, and my very last question, where would you put this game? So now, now I'm expecting you to type in percentages. Choose, pick one percentage on the left. Okay, 30, 60, 35, 60, okay. 82, but reality 40. I'm not understanding that. Maybe there's a mathematician in the room. Please correct me if I'm not making sense. 70, 50, 50. Vito, my friend Vito, you got the right answer uh, as far as I know, but please double check and please prove me wrong if I'm wrong. But as far as I can, I thought about this all night. I think this game is a 50, a 50%. Think about it. One third we're only talking about the accuracy. So one third event one happens. One third, nothing happens, neutral. And the other third is event B, a loser happens. So one 33% is for winners. One 33% is for losers. So I think it's 50-50 because the neutral events don't matter. Is my, Franco, if you're a mathematician, is my thinking correct? I, okay, uh, Franco's not answering, but yeah, you have to eat the beans, Mark, but that doesn't, yeah, that's irrelevant for <laughs> what we're here for. Okay, right, 50%. Now, as to 50%, now you can look at the number next to 50%, and that's basically all I wanted to say with this whole game. All I wanted to say is the number next to 50%. And the number there is, can you see the same thing? 16, right? So statistically, you have when you play this game, and if you choose to play this great game, although you know it has, and the magic word is positive expectancy, although you know it has a positive expectancy, although you know that it's worth playing this game because you'll be up if you play it long enough, but you have to be you have to be ready for 16 losers in a row that's statistically a likely event sooner or later it will happen to you 
Okay, now what is interesting to me that my first question five minutes ago when you entered those numbers, there was like two, five, ten, I think. We can go back and uh, check them again. But I don't think anybody thought of high numbers like 16. I don't think even, I think maybe there was 110, but most of the numbers were below 10. Now, I didn't ask you to play this with me to prove anything. Uh, I'm just as liable. All of us human beings are very liable to make misjudgments uh, when it comes to probability. We are, our brains are not built basically uh, you know, uh, to, to, to make good decisions about probabilistic outcomes. And it's very important that we are aware of this and then we find ways to compensate for it. That's what, uh, you know, crunching the numbers behind, uh, behind what we do is so important for. All right, so bottom line, this is a 50% probability game. The win loss or the accuracy would be 50%. If this is a trading system, I would love to have this trading system. It will solve all my problems. The only thing that I have to be careful of is to, can you please finish the sentence? So if this was a trading system, I'd love to have this system, I think. I'd love to pay for this system, but there's just one thing that I would have to make sure. And what is that? Drawdowns, exactly, to survive the worst possible time that can happen to me. And that, you know, the drawdown or the technical term I'm sure you know is risk of ruin. The risk of ruin is, in this case, is 16 uh, losers in a row. All right. So when you design your trading system, um, basically you have to design your account size in such a way that it is able to survive a worst case scenario. So that 16 is basically like an airbag in a car. All right, are you with me on that? So when I first uh, thought about this, I, um, I found it very um, interesting, first of all, uh, thought provoking and uh, for my own activities as well. So I'm no exception. Please don't get me wrong. Uh, we're all in the same boat. But it's I think it's in the long term, if we look at our activities in trading as a business, uh, these are numbers and, uh, and uh, you know, take away, uh, takeaways that we cannot ignore. All right. Okay, um, so 16. So next time a friend of you calls you and says, hey, you know what, I want to trade the ES uh, and I have $3,000 account and my stop is, let's say, 500 bucks. Well, trading the ES with $500 stop on a $3,000 account, uh, now you know just by looking at the numbers, it's not going to take you too long to ruin that account, I mean. Okay, so, so much about the numbers. And uh, let's see. Uh, so think about this when you design your trading strategy, when you design uh, your business, and also when you decide what trades you can afford and what trades you cannot afford to do, what strategy you, you want to uh, incorporate in your business and what is beyond, uh, you know, our means at any one point in time. All right. So 16 is the magic number. Let's move on. Now, I'm not saying that every trading uh, strategy in the world is 50%. This is just an example. Of course, if the accuracy, proven accuracy is higher or let's say lower, then the numbers, of course, uh, are modified accordingly. All right, let's move on. I have a technical announcement um, 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 that I, uh, I'd like to do. Okay, so just two days ago, I think last night, the, di the night before, two days ago, there was an update in NinjaTrader. Uh, many of us have downloaded 16.1, which is wonderful. But unfortunately, some error messages started to show up uh, when you use the Remex system. They are not generated by the Remex system because it's just a BLK file. But uh, let me assure you that our friends at SI Shark Indicators are working hard on this, and an up update patch should come out soon to uh, take care of these uh pop-up, you know, messages that um, some of you have written to me and I have seen them as well. So those should be resolved uh, quickly. And uh, all right. And now we're ready to talk a little bit about uh, Remac Momentum. 
our new program, which actually, by the way, uh, is, let me show it to you, is running in the background. You see the market, I think it's closed now, 455, so it's closed. But this is the Ninja 8 version of Remic Momentum. And uh, let me show you on this powerful machine, I'm also running the Ninja 7 version of Remic Momentum, okay? So the two Ninjas live next to each other without any problems. And uh, interestingly, I haven't been getting any uh, error messages in the past few hours. So, so uh, maybe these, uh, you know, random issues will get resolved quickly. All right. So, I promise you, I haven't been looking at this for hours. So this is uh, this result is just random chance. Don't draw conclusions from it. And uh, so, but this is an this is the ES of today. And uh, so just a quick look, this is an NT7 version. And here we go, if I can click on the proper chart, here's the NT8 version. We're gonna look at these later in just a few minutes, but let me go back to the presentation because a few things I'd like to share with you here. Okay, let me step back once. Okay, so uh, how can we gain momentum in a trading business with Remec Momentum? Well, as you know, the chart, when we look at a chart, uh, we're just basically looking at the visual representation of the feelings and fears and greed and whatever of many, many, many people. Let's call them zillions of participants in the financial market and a given instrument at any given point in time. It's just a visual representation of the cumulative actions of, of many, many people. Uh, I always tend to think of uh, it's like an x-ray, you know, many people's x-ray put on the wall. Um, and then we're just looking at all the cumulative results uh, of those of those uh, individual actions. Now, what does that mean? That means that uh, although efficient market hypothesis is is uh, is a theory which is worthy of your attention, uh, the randomness of the market is is a fact. The only thing that some people may or may not agree or disagree on is how much uh, how much of the market movements can be predictive predicted with statistical probability we traders tend to think that at least some parts of the market action can be predicted that's why we're doing this if it was completely random it would totally not make sense to engage in this activity uh, we seem to think that it is not totally random and we want to design activities based on that knowledge uh, so that we can gain from this knowledge and skills. Basically, that's what we're doing here. All right, the financial markets uh, have some characteristics that are uh, basically timeless. Uh, you can go back to Phoenician times or the Dutch tulip mania and stuff like that, hundreds of years. And if you look at the data, you see you can draw the same chart as what happened on the ES in the past two days is basically happened the same thing in the East India Company where Isaac Newton, the genius Isaac Newton, lost a lot of money. So markets tend to exhibit the same behavior over centuries. And there's a reason for that because the participants are people and people have not changed much in a couple of hundred years or even thousands of years for that matter. And basically the chart, you can think of it as a visual representation of all the emotions of the participants, which we will call volatility. Uh, and volatility comes in clusters. And that's what I'm driving at here. And that's what the Remic momentum uh, is based on. Because uh, market equilibrium, when like we can the other word we can call this like a range bound market, right? Equilibrium when we have nothing to do or it's very risky to do anything to engage in activities or participate in the market um, is always followed by some volatility increase where price moves away from the so-called, you know, whatever moving average or whatever, however you want to measure this, let's call it equilibrium state. And that move, the first volatility move is usually or at least with statistical tendency, is followed by a second move. That's why that famous saying, you know, some of the sayings in the trading business do not make sense, but this, I tend to believe that it does. The second mouse gets the cheese. 
And that's what we are trying to do with the Remic Momentum. That's exactly what we're trying to do, and I'll show you how. All right, now one more thing. Uh, you're encouraged to do your own due diligence and do the math and go back and look at the charts historically. Uh, but what we have found is that this observation is backed by data. So volatility comes in clusters. It's backed by a data. So there's no, no, uh, you know, voodoo or esoteric science behind this or magic lines or whatever. This is uh, rooted in data. Okay, I'd like to say a few things about, because many of you have asked, especially in the past week, um, and if I may ask you, could you type in a yes quickly if you are using, have used, or if you own the Remex system? Because many people have asked me to compare the two. So what, 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 what's the situation is now, thank you guys, thank you. There's a lot of people have the Remex system. Okay, this is a product that we've had out for about four years. Okay, hundreds of users are on it um, and it's i think it's important to kind of clarify how the system how, how they may be similar and how they are different and how it can fit into your or maybe both can fit into your trading uh your trading activities or your trading business so let me spend a few minutes about highlighting the differences and the possible similarities which there are actually all right, so in the Remex system, if you have used the Remex system, if you have seen the videos, uh, you know already that with the Remex system, there's a drop-down list. And with the drop-down list, you basically, you select by selecting the longer short from the drop-down list, you anticipate the next trade. You designate, remember this, uh, you designate an area of business, and if price turns direction, changes direction, uh, uh, inflects in technical terms, right? In, in that area of business, then you do want to be in that trade. If in that area of business nothing happens, you simply switch off the system and uh, go back to neutral state. So that's how the Remex system works. Uh, Remex momentum, uh, well, uh, you don't really, there's no drop down list, there's an entry and exit. Okay, so we don't enter into a mode and wait for the proper for the signal in a direction the technique uh the the under the underlying uh methodology of you know of a pullback trade is basically the same but how we go about executing it is a little bit different uh in the momentum system you actually wait for the signal and i want to mention here two things here so the two things to do this, you can actually wait for the signal. And if you are familiar with Blackbird, you can have this, I'll show you in detail a little bit. Oh, why don't I just go to Ninja 8 right away and I'll show you in practice. So here's our big blue button, as we call it, the auto enabled and disabled, right? So with the Remic momentum in Ninja 8, you are in entry mode. So either way you are, you're going to take long or short trade, but only if you press this button, if the system is enabled, if you have nothing to do, or if you decide to ignore a signal, then you simply press this button. Okay, so most of the time, you will be pressing this button when you use the momentum system. With the Remex system, very often, you'll be using the drop down list and leave this alone, this blue button alone. So, but that's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's just a, a technicality. Uh, but it's important to know how we how the system was designed. Also, with the uh, with the momentum system, I want you to note one thing: is important. Sometimes you disable a certain direction. You see. So, for example, let me give you an example. Uh, okay. So the system is designed to give you potential potentially good pullback trades. So. Look at these long signals. Okay, some of these long signals work, some of these long sig signals don't. But I can assure you, since the second mouse tends to get the cheese, mouse number six or mouse number 17 is possibly not going to get anything because the trend, uh, you know, will not exist by that time. The trend seems to, uh, and they tend to fade with time, all right? Now, why do I say this? Because when you have one, two, three, 
put this one didn't work but this one maybe is a couple of bucks you could make out of this and uh, all right so whatever these trades were uh, let's remember we're looking at the es today so this is a pretty uh, special situation on the markets today as we know all right but having said that if you're not interested in this third signal although the system will give it to you you simply disable the longs there thereby you are still active for the shorts so if the system gives you a short you can take it you will be able to take it because the short is enabled but the long is will not be taken because you have disabled it because you're not interested in the third or fourth signal okay so i'll be happy to go into more details uh, in that and, and we're from starting next week we're going to have ample opportunity to talk about all the little details um, uh, you know of how to uh, use this uh, system to our advantage but these are the main points so you'll be using these buttons much more frequently they were available in the remex system as well with remex momentum you will be actually using these much more actively and more often okay so let me go back to the presentation a little bit all uh, right and uh, and uh, Right, other differences. Uh, as you know, the Remex system works with Renko bars, and it works with on Renko bars for good reason because we're not, we were not, we are not interested in the noise when we use the Remex system. The Remex system entries are always taken at price inflection points, so and the the best way to do that is with Renko bars, and uh, and uh, that's how the system works. Uh, one. One uh, characteristic of Renko bars, uh, by and large, I'm not going to go into technical details now in this presentation, but but by and large, uh, Renko bars are not really backtestable. And I know there are exceptions, and we can talk about that, but, but maybe next time, okay? So for now, the Remex system, the main way you really verify the system, and, and if you have the system if you read the, the the documentation that you know this already by heart was forward testing you do 50 trades you do 100 trades you do 200 trades and you forward test yourself with the system that's how you verify the system okay um, and uh, one more difference right the remex system traditionally we are concentrating on three setups uh, you, you, many people actually just picked one and focus on that one which is completely fine but the system was uh, was built to handle three setups. The Remec momentum is basically we're just focusing on one. And technically, uh, when you go back to the literature, right, it's uh, it's nothing but a pullback trade. And uh, and you can tell me, well, what's the big deal about the pullback trade? And I've seen that I've heard that sentence a million times from people who never made any money on the stock market. So the pullback trade is uh, right. What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is to do it right. That's the big deal. So this system, uh, I hope, uh, can help you to do it right. And uh, by focusing on one certain uh, characteristic of the market, which is coming back to equilibrium and moving away again. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, right. So the Remic Momentum, we respond to triggers. We don't anticipate triggers. We respond to them. And I want to show you, let me go back to Ninja 8 for just one second. Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth, but I want to show you something. So when you trade with, uh, and this is the live market right now, when you trade with this system, uh, there are two ways to do this. And you can do it either way, it's up to you. Uh, basically, you can have this switched off, wait for the signal, and then do nothing, but go long when that bar is exceeded. And you can go along manually, but you go along manually with the knowledge that the system has calculated the best potential entry for you. All right. If you do it that way, this is like a miniature breakout trade, a miniature breakout trade, because you just want to. So what you do, you get the signal and then you put a limit order. I can do it right now. Where's my. Uh, anyway, you can put a limit order on the on the chart or just wait till price exceeds and just press go long. Okay, that's one technique. The other technique is of course, is just to take the signal. Now, 
Traditionally, when you take this, uh, we don't really believe in being able to be successful with very tight stops. And certainly when you take, when you operate a system like this, our initial stop is usually at the other end of the Keltner. That doesn't mean that we always wait for price to come back and you know we don't really want to give all this money to the market necessarily, but that's where our initial stop needs to be. And then later, as the as market proves us wrong or prove us right, we can move our stop in either in either case. More about that later or in another presentation. But what I wanted to emphasize here is that two ways to do it. Either you take the signal, no questions asked, or in, in which case it's enabled, or switch this off, wait for the signal, and you make a discretionary decision looking at the larger chart if you're interested in that system, in that signal or not. Both methods are, I, I've done both. I'll tell you more about that in just two or three minutes. I've done both. I like both ways. Uh, and uh, I don't think one is better than the other. Um, but if you do want that extra confirmation of yourself looking at like that discretionary st stage in the decision tree, then um, by all means, you can do it that way too. The other way is, of course, as the as the as the trend fades away after the second third or whatever fourth signal you will most likely i'm not saying what to do i'm not telling you what to do but most likely you may want to switch this off because you're not really interested in pullback signal number seven to seven all right uh, now let's go back to what else i wanted to share with you here there's lots i hope uh, let me check with you uh, do you have any questions at this point because i I have uh, the feeling that I emerged in this a little bit too much, perhaps. And uh, let me just check with you if you if you're with me on what I've said so far, or if you have any questions. Okay. So bottom line, the two systems are not the same. They can both be uh, valuable additions to a trading arsenal. Um, the techniques, uh, in concrete terms, are a little bit different. But uh, if they were not different, it wouldn't be two systems. So, uh, of course, they're different. And uh, basically, yes, one more interesting and, and, and important fact about Remac Momentum, since we tend to use it on tick charts, uh, you're welcome. It is built in such a way that it can be used on any time frame on any chart. But that doesn't mean it can make money on any time frame and on any chart or any instrument. I mean, there's no such thing. So you will have to do some research on your preferred time frame and instrument. Uh, but having said that, there's no limitation. And, uh, and, and due to that fact, it's fully back testable. So basically, let me show that to you too. Uh, you know this too, this is a tick chart, right? It's technically back testable. So what do I do? I don't know how many days I have. I don't think I have too many. I have five days, okay? So there's various ways in Ninja to back test something. And that's a topic of another uh, presentation, of course, but let me just right click here and I have no idea. I'm going to say real time historical and let me just drag this over. Okay, so we made a respectable 50 bucks profit. Uh, little profit factors a little bit. So it is back testable, and although you have to verify this in various ways, but uh, a tick chart, of course, is a tick bar technically is very different um, in how it operates from a Renko bar. All right, so these results, backtesting results, is something you can work with reliably in your in your own research. Okay, oh, I see a question coming in. Why do I use the tick chart? What is the equivalent time frame? I, uh, you can use anything. I, you see, I have a thirty minute. I often use the fifty minute chart. I, uh, the more I work with various bar types, the more I like them all but for various reasons. Uh, why, I, 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 I don't know why, I just like tick charts. Uh, one thing, one, okay, Scott, so to answer, let me, okay, so since you asked me, let me ask you to focus on these large bars. You see, the ES today was going up like the two days of dropping like a stone, right? Uh, it was going up like helium today until it collapsed. And in this area, on a minute chart, on a time-based chart, 
basically you see a couple of large bars and uh, but that's 15 minutes what if my trading time frame is five ten minutes then uh, i i want to like a forensic uh, researcher i want to be able to look inside these bars and one effective way to look inside these bars is either a smaller time frame like a five minutes or whatever or a tick chart that tells me or shows me look at these beautiful potential uh let me do it this way bear flags you see potential entries into the market uh as we are coming down but if it's just a 15 minute bar then i have no idea where to enter or if i have a good opportunity to enter at all so the various ways to do this uh, the point i wanted to make is that you're not limited to renko bars and you're free to design your own uh, basically trading style whatever you're comfortable with it has to be something that you're comfortable with um, so going back to everything that i wanted to share with you right okay so let's move on uh, so what do i be, mean by calibration when you when you work and i'm going to go back to ninja 8 soon again but let me finish this chart so when you work with ninja 8 or ninja 7 on a chart whether it's a minute bar tick bar or range bar whatever you choose um, by calibration i mean is that you do want to see if you trade intraday most of us do so ninja again in intraday I, this is one day i want to see i want to see the whole day uh here on this chart which is the chart i'm actually trading uh the momentum chart right is more detailed i'm not i'm most unless you have a giant screen or something you're not going to see the whole day but i do want to uh, have one chart at least in the corner that shows me the big picture and another chart this can be daily or whatever you choose and one more step up a higher time frame just to show you the context okay obviously if you're if you find yourself you know in the in the middle of a bar like this uh it wouldn't lead it wouldn't take us to too far if we wanted to look for long trades on the small chart when a whole tsunami is coming against us so the large chart the context is very important and the the three time frames usually is enough to give us uh, enough information about you know what we might want to execute on the small chart which is where we're going to make our money but we need to be uh, you know we need to be well informed about the context okay uh right oh, oh that's the next chart and i'm going to get to that in just one second okay uh so that's what i mean by calib calibration i mean choose something that you're you're comfortable looking at um if you ask me i often end up during uh, intraday sessions, I often end up looking at a 3000 tick ES chart just because it kind of works for me. It's not because the number is magic, it could be 3002 ticks, it makes no difference. Whatever you're comfortable with and you, you, know, you practice trading on and works for you, um, just go for it. And I tend to choose another chart as a higher time frame, either a minute chart, usually 15 or 30 minute chart, or like an 8,000 or 10,000 tick, if it's the ES, which is like three, four, five times larger than the chart that I'm trading, all right? And uh, remember, we analyze the trend structure, uh, one pullback, two pullbacks, three pullbacks. The pullbacks themselves and the, and the, uh, and the uh, momentum move out of the full pullback gives, you, gives us uh, very very important information about the strength of the trend okay remember for a trend to be you know intact uh, we must get a higher high and a higher low if one is broken that trend is in trouble and that uh, is important information us, uh, for us so we tend to look at the second maximum the third mouse but not the sixth one and uh, yeah larger charts uh, so basically larger chart uh in the corner 
helps us to do stuff on the trading chart that uh, is less risky. It uh, it uh, we thereby we can ignore a little bit of the random liquidity or the meaningless noise. The people use different words for this. Some I've seen clueless traders. Whatever, depending on how cruel you want to be, you can use different terms for this. But the, usually, the, the the smaller charts you trade, the more the noise, obviously. So consider these and choose three charts that you're comfortable working with. Okay, last but not least, remember that game with the bean cans and do the math. So you can have the best strategy in the world, uh, but if you run out of cans, then the game, game is over. And it's, uh, it's just a game of probabilities. You don't know, uh, you know the distribution of the results of each individual trade in the in a in a history of hundreds and hundreds of trades okay enough about that now let's move on to some fun stuff uh i can uh, i have a confession to make to you guys i started using the remec momentum system on july 4th independence day in the united states july 4th was the first day i opened up a new database this is in simulation mode by the way so i'm not uh commodity advisor or anything. Uh, I'm a software guy. So this is in simulation just for just to close that legal part of it. Uh, so it's a new database. Uh, I started to try to follow the momentum methodology as as closely as I can. Uh, you will see that mistakes were made. I'm not perfect. Uh, you will see the results. And uh, I also want to say that this database was has not been reset it's still there 800 782 the project will be is a six-month project will be done uh will be finished on december 31st uh, i'm doing it just for fun and uh basically what i wanted to see is if you do this for half a year what happens that's all what happens um mistakes and everything included good days bad days whatever everything included what happens and this is just one instance of what can happen. If I did it again, obviously the result would be different. Every time you do it, it's different. Uh, but still, it gives us some indication. And it's 782 trades. Oh, one thing about the number of trades. I think in Ninja 8, statistically, when you enter with two contracts, Ninja treats them as separate trades. So in since I enter with two tra contracts, most of the time, these are actually about 350 400 trades all right in about four months almost four months so enough uh, sample uh, data sample to to start to work with anyway all right so i um, this runs on a different machine so i i cannot show you that machine right now but i videotaped my database just so that i can show it to you so these are 700 trades and uh, one more thing, just for in the spirit of full disclosure, uh, I have an auditor here in Toronto who looks at this, who I report to every Saturday. So there's a guy who checks this and checks my computer that the database is not reset. All right. So that said, let's see what happened. All right. So now it's uh, October 25th, and this is what happened so far. Started with $50,000. The account now is $103,000. And uh, I'm not saying this to brag or anything. Actually, I'm showing you a very difficult period. I could, I mean, I could have painted this chart any way I wanted to, but I want to show you. First of all, I'm not perfect. Second, this was a pretty big drawdown. And mostly I can say it was my fault. Here in this plateau, and I think I've learned from this, I got a little frustrated, to be honest. You look at this. For two months, it was going pretty well. There was a plateau, uh, mostly U.S. futures, end of July, uh, or actually it was in, no, first couple of days of September. I was just not getting anywhere, and I think I got a little impatient. And then here, that was about four or five days where I really uh, practically had to, literally had to meditate myself out of this pit. And although this this little drawback I regard as normal, so I wasn't worried about that. But here I already knew that I'm I'm gonna be okay. And then later, right now the end of it. I mean, nobody in the world knew 
what would happen in the past two days, right? So on the ES. So, I'm oh, sorry. So this is kind of an outlier. Of course, of course, a lot of money was made here in the past two days on this account, but uh, but you can, you know, you can uh, even ignore that because it doesn't really happen that often. But what is interesting is that if you if you um, disregard, ignore this little crisis here, which was a, a result of my own impatient actions, the curve is kind of like 40 percentage, not, not even 45 percent. So uh, seems to be pretty stable with an expected plateau. And actually, I showed this uh, to a person here in Toronto who's a portfolio manager. He's been a portfolio manager for 40 years. And I showed it to him. And the first thing I said, look, but there's a pit in it. And he said, the first thing he said was, if there wasn't, I wouldn't even believe you. So that's uh, that, that was an interesting comment by somebody who's been doing this for 40 years. If it wasn't there, I wouldn't even believe you. So anyway, let's move on. So this is the momentum system running discretionarily, a uh, couple of trades a day, uh, starting July 4th to today. Okay, so what do these numbers mean? First of all, it doesn't mean that I'm a great trader, I'm a genius or something. Uh, it just means that the this system is capable in relatively capable hands. Uh, there's some questions coming in, so let me ask, let me read them now. Can you auto trade with Blackbird, Daniel? Yes, of course. Uh, with either, with both the Remex system and Remex uh, momentum, you can auto trade, yes. I'm not sure if I would recommend it. Uh, I would recommend it in a discretionary way. So with the Remex system and with the with the uh, momentum. So let's focus on momentum today. Uh, it is quite possible to leave it switched on, enabled, and just take the trade. Yes. Actually, I have a lot of backtesting results in auto mode, and they're not bad. I personally like to kind of look at it and definitely skip the trades. Uh, the five, uh, six, fifth, or sixth trade in a trend. Uh, I'm not too worried about, you know, I don't take them. Uh, next question. Why do I use a tick chart? I think I answered that. What were your rules? Uh, the rules were, is basically pullback trades, Sam. I'm trading with the, I'm trading with the momentum system. I wait for the trades and there are some signals I skipped based on information coming in from the higher time frame chart. Also, there were some times of the day that I skip. So let's say 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. I don't necessarily take the trade, however good it might look on the chart. Okay. Uh, managing the trade. Okay, one more question. Hold on one second. This is for the uh, Sam. I'm not sure I understand uh, uh, your comment about the trading brain. Uh, if you explain, I'll be happy to say something. How do I manage the trade? I manage the trade with Blackbird, which means a very good question. Thank you, Vito. Okay, Vito. Uh, so how do I manage the trade? Uh, there's a there's a stop, an initial stop at the other side of the counter. Okay. Now there's two interesting things. If this if the trade goes against me, then there is of course a certain limit of pain I'm ready to bear. A after that, I'm not interested, so I get out, uh, or the system gets me out. You can modify these rules to your liking, by the way, in Blackbird, right? So that's customizable. That part of the system is customizable, but you already know that. All right. Um, the other side, if it's if it turn if the trade works, then I usually take, not usually, but always, I take 50% off at one R. So whatever my initial, usually it's two or three ATRs, I take one contract off, pull up my stop to break even, and then let the other one run as far as it runs. And I follow it from a respectable distance. So that's how it works. Nothing new there. But I'm, I, I don't think there's anything really new in that, but, uh, but the consistency and, and Blackbird and let me say a few words about Blackbird. So that without Bloodhound and Blackbird, this would be impossible to do, first of all. Okay. Sam, I'll look at the dictionary a little later. Sorry. 
I'm a little busy, but thanks. Okay, so what do the numbers mean? So basically, why did I show this to you? Not to, not for anything else except for what's written here. You need a system, whatever system you use, and I'm not telling you to, to start using this system, whatever your system, I recommend the system, but there may be other ones that uh, fit your trading style better. Uh, you have to make that decision. But any system, and I think this system is among those that can really help to structure your approach and to treat it and to start to really treat it like a business. You know, think of the can of beans. It's a business uh, based in math and consistent action. That's all there is to it. Um, a system like Remac Momentum can really, it did help me. I've gone through the experience, experience myself. So it helps me tremendously to structure my thinking. Uh, these colored lines, let me show you the trend at the bottom of the charts. Just these lines, you, you may think it's no big deal. Well, actually, uh, when I, the reason it's there, actually, they should be on this chart as well. Uh, you can put it on any chart, by the way, just uh, one of the ingredients of the system. It really helps you to focus on the direction of the market that you need to be or you should be trading in. Uh, a lot of problems can be avoided by using this system to uh, structure your thinking and act accordingly. It structures your actions as well, right? And uh, the, the end result will be uh, results. That's the that's what we want. We want results. And I think I've shown you the results already. Now, is there a guarantee? Again, legal disclaimer, but nothing is ever guaranteed in the future, right? We don't know the future. So please uh, uh, remember that and the usual disclaimer applies. Okay. Um, right. So the market is closed now. And I've tried to, sorry if I, oh, I've... Uh, be going on for about an hour, but uh, I'll try to make this short now. Uh, one thing I recorded the afternoon, this is from this afternoon. Uh, be, since the market is closed now, I wanted to show you, this is 2.09 p.m. So this was in this afternoon, I just recorded the screen. And uh, just to show you that, but first of all, this was about 20 minutes and there were no error messages on my machine. That's one thing, just for those of you who may uh, be asking this or have asked me uh, by email. All right. Uh, if you have had any, it will be taken care of. So don't worry about that part. And here, let me just see. So, uh, of course, trading is done well if it's boring. So, of course, this is 15, 20 minutes, nothing happening. But, but you can see that the system is doing what it was supposed to do. And uh, trailing stop, probably the target will be hit. And uh, this is on YouTube, by the way, and it will be uh, in the material that goes out. So you, you're welcome to. And there will be more as we go along. So money taken. Uh, the system works. The same thing works in Ninja 7. We've tested it in Ninja 7 and Ninja 8. And uh, just works wonderfully. All right. So this was about Remac Momentum. And let me stop. Uh, some questions are here. Uh, coming in here. So let me just, uh, Sam, I'm going to answer your question in just one second. Let me ask everybody if you have, uh, since I want to move on to another area uh, of the presentation, there's about five more minutes to go. So bear with me for a few minutes. And uh, let me ask you if you have any questions at this point about Remac Momentum. So just to repeat, there will be more webinars uh, next week. Uh, you're going to hear what I'm going to say about next week in just a minute. Uh, there will be ample opportunity to study this system and go into more detail. How the system defines trends. The proprietary algorithm, I cannot share it with you, Sam, but I can say that it uh, defines, defines trends in a reliable way. Um, of course, no system or mathematical algorithm, however smart, can ever tell you the future. So there will be situations where the trade however many, I'm sorry, the trend, however miniature trend just simply fails. Those things will happen all the time. Uh, this indicator is here for to tell you exactly that. Okay, short failed. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm saying. The system is talking to you. Look at the longs. 
and uh, generally the system is doing what it's doing pretty well oh one more thing interesting so it will tell you this is different from the remix system by the way it will tell you partial signals show you partial signals these are discretionary signals kind of fading out you may want to take them or not uh, but it's here for your consideration this is not the best one but there will be good ones where this will come handy the other thing is that this line that may be new to you okay this just tells when this ends you should stop really stop looking at shorts for the time being anyway all right so that is just uh, further helping you to focus on the direction of the of where the market is going so you don't find yourself going against uh, a freight train or something okay Okay, uh, let me move on to the next section and then just a few minutes left. I'm very excited about the next section because next Monday we're starting the Remic Room, 9.30 to 11 Eastern. Uh, I have spoken to many, many people lately and uh, I'm happy to say that now this is becoming a reality. So uh, we'll be here for you uh, with all the support that you may need. Uh, to turn your business into a profitable business, or if it's profitable, then turn it into even more profitable. We're going to look at U.S. futures. So every day we'll be here. There's a membership. You can uh, sign up. There's, there's going to be a special deal on that today or this weekend. And uh, it will include daily game plans, setups, and strategy, question, support. And we're going to look at two systems during the week. Monday, Wednesday, we'll be using the Remax system and th Tuesday, Thursday, the Remax Momentum. Friday will be open for to discuss any issues and question and answers in the weekly review. So there's a seven day trial period. Uh, you can cancel any time, it's up to you. We hope you'll find it useful or many of you will find it useful. We're, we're doing our best to make it useful. And to for those of you who are on the verge of you know, reaching the next uh, level in your trading, uh, careers, we hope to be able to push in the right direction towards profitability. So that's all I wanted to say. And uh, okay, so here we go, webinar specials. This is really the last one. I really thank you for your patience because I think this might have been a bit longer than usual. Um, and uh, so uh, basically, I have some uh, specials for you in appreciation of your patience and attendance and attention. All right, so. Uh, we have bundles, the Remex system itself and Remex Momentum is bundled with Shark Indicators, excellent products, Bloodhound and Blackbird. And uh, those bundles already include a 30% off if you do the math today and uh, as part of this promotion till Sunday midnight Eastern time, we'll take another 10% off. So that's almost like uh, if you do the compound math, it's something like around 40% anyway. All right, there's a promo code, so please note the code, uh, Remec Bundles, one word, and, uh, and uh, you can check out what deals there are in the bundles area. Remec Momentum as a standalone product for Ninja 8 is 30% uh, off this week, and as a special gesture, we're including this weekend the Ninja 7 version for you free of charge. So if you ever feel nostalgic and uh, you know, and uh, I can show you Ninja 7. I love Ninja 7. There's nothing wrong. We've been on it for 10 years almost. So Ninja 7, the good old Ninja 7, is a faithful partner of ours. So there's no real reason not to have it handy when we need it. All right. So the Ninja 7 version of Remac Momentum will be uh, included free of charge this weekend for anybody and everybody who buys the Remac Momentum for Ninja 8. There's a promo code, Remac Momentum, one word. And the last one, the third one, is the Remec Room, which is a daily service, 9.30 to 11, live. So this is basically a trade room, but we, we plan to do to make this much more than a trade room. Uh, we, we want to be this like a profit center almost for all the members and to provide all the support that you may need to use our products in a profitable way. All right, there's a 40% off regular price. 
uh, that will make it 95.40 per month. Uh, and the details are on the website. And also, if you click on the link uh, in this presentation, the link of which will be shared with you uh, over the weekend. Okay, so you can just click on these links, and and uh, we will take you right to that part of the store where uh, these specials are. Okay, well, that was a lot. Uh, and uh, basically, that's all I wanted to share with you. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I really thank you for your patience. It was a little longer. And uh, yes, uh, contact. Here's my contact, support at remec.ca. And also those links in the uh, in the upper part of the screen, those are links that take you to products or services, the special area of the store. Okay. Uh, that's it, basically. So I welcome your questions and, uh, and really thank you for your attention. And I hope you found this useful. Thank you, Vito. I'm glad you're here, Sam. It's a pleasure to have you here. How's the system define trends? Oh, that's oh, I think I, I, I mentioned that before. Uh, standard way, high or high, high or low, gives you an uptrend. When it's broken, the trend is in trouble. When the second part, the lower low, higher low, actually the higher high is broken, then the, that trend is history. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you for the kind words. I really enjoyed it. I I hope it came through that I love doing this. So, I, you know, it's happens to be my product, but uh, it's trading is something that we should love doing. That's when results tend to come to us. And, uh, you know, hard work, patience, and, and uh, whatever we do in life, I think we should love what we do. And I'm certainly very excited about both my role in the company and also my role at uh, the university. So it's uh, trading strategies. Uh, yeah, work and hobby at the same time. Thank you. Questions, please. Or anything that maybe was not clarified enough or didn't go into too much detail. Maybe I went into too much detail in some areas, which I pardon. Yes, yes, Scott, that's how it works. Uh, it's a recurring payment. Oh, let, okay, so let me say, uh, uh, okay, Scott, thank you for that question. This is called the preferred rate special. That means that the uh, the standard price is uh, 197, I think, 195 or 97. Let me just go to the shop and I'll show you right away. So shop, so this is the actual website and you click on services and here we go, the new, these are services that we've always had for years. And now these three ones at the bottom are the same room. It's just three different options to subscribe, basically to become a member, All right? Monthly membership rate, 95.40. Now that price will be in effect as long as you uh, subscribe. So if you cancel and maybe you want to come back later, you cannot get this price again. You have to go for the monthly membership, which, which is 149. There is an option for an annual payment. If anybody is interested in that, that's that's a, that's a substantial savings on an annual basis. Uh, so it's up to you which one. We, don't, we want it to be as versatile as we can. Certainly, this seems to be a good value. But of course, this is a new service. And although you know Remec Trading Systems as a company has been here since 2011, we are ready to you know, to stand ready to prove ourselves and uh, and uh, build up the business uh, in this way as well. Technically speaking, you will have to pay, but it just takes an email and your money will be refunded right away within the first seven days. Okay. Um, I hope I answered that question. Is there are any more questions? Let me go back to the presentation. Oh, well, once I'm here, so we're in the shop. The products are kind of categorized, uh, hopefully in a easy to follow way. So Remec Momentum, bond, these are all the bundles with Remec Momentum. These are the bundles with the Remec system. There are more choices here because the Remec system has three editions. Otherwise, uh, it's pretty basic, it's just bundles. 
There are standalone products by Shark Indicators, as you know. So if you so choose, uh, they're all available here. The bar types and Blackbird and uh, Bloodhound. We have another product called the Classic Pack. And uh, OK, I'm glad I bumped into this here because I want to say something. The Classic Pack is based on uh, time proven indicators from the 70s. I first read about it in a book uh, written by Linda Rashke in the 90s. Other professionals are using it effectively since then. If you Google it, you'll find everything that you need to find about this. Now we have uh, coded the Ninja 7 and the Ninja 8 version of the, these are two indicators. So Ninja 7, Ninja 8, altogether you're getting four indicators to the same two for Ninja 7 and Ninja 8 for a low price, quite effective. And the point I want to make, this is now part of momentum. So if you if you buy momentum, you get this as well. All right. But we're going to keep this as a separate product because there will be and might be people who don't want momentum, but they just want this Linda Rashka's indicators. That's fine with us. It's here. If you get momentum, you get this as well. Uh, right. Uh, what else did I want it to? If I forgot something, please remind me. Otherwise, I hope it's obvious. And then when you put this in the basket, uh, you just have to check out. You just enter that promo code, and uh, I'm sure discount code is called, and then the, it will be calculated for you automatically. Okay. Yes, uh, good question, Scott. Thanks. If we offer demos of Remec Momentum, yes, of course we do. Uh, let me show you that too. There's a 15-day trial for Remec Momentum and for the Remec system, of course, as well. Um, here's the free trial. Please fill this out. Click subscribe. I'm going to change this on the weekend. I'm going to, uh, it's actually not subscribe, but whatever, download, I'll change this. And then uh, you will get an email with a download uh, link and the password for, for a license for 15 days and uh, full support for 15 days, so you have uh, enough time. And as you know, Bloodhound and Blackbird have a 30-day uh, trial period, so you can time so that you can, there's a good overlap. And actually, if after the 15 day, let me say this, uh, you want another 15 because you're still trying out Blackbird and Bloodhound, not a problem at all. So just send me an email. I'll be happy to extend your trial for another 15 days because, uh, yeah, because it's just fair that if you have a Bloodhound trial and Blackbird trial, you don't want to run out of your momentum trial during that period. All right, uh, any more questions? Okay, well, uh, if there's any more questions coming in, I'll try to keep an eye on it. Oh, there's one more. Uh, well, technically, okay, Darren is asking if the momentum discount, which is now in effect, will be in effect after the trial. That's a good question. Uh, to be honest, uh, technically it is not, all right, because this special that you see on the screen now will expire on Sunday. This is a webinar special, so Sunday uh, midnight Eastern time. But I tell you what, since you asked, and I really appreciate it, if you want to try the momentum, and if you send me an email that you want to go on a trial for 15 days, then after the 15 days, I'll make sure that this special price will be uh, in effect for you. All I'm asking, just please send me uh, an email, which I can mark with a special color, so in 15 days, I'll remember what I promised to you. Thank you, Darren. I appreciate that. Good question, and it's, it's quite fair that we do that, of course. We do want people to try for 15 days. And uh, look, it may work for some people. It may not work for some others. It works great for me. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. Uh, the people who are who have bought it, uh, I've received some very good re reviews, uh, which you can check out in the testimonials, but I'm not going to brag about that now. All right, so the methodology is valid. Uh, one more thing, uh, just the last thing, if I may say uh, a few words about this. Uh, 
any result, success in trading, and probably many areas of life, it depends on two things. In the case of trading, one is the system, and the second is how the trader follows the system. Right? So, so just repeat. One is the system. It's like the map in your hand. And the, but the second ingredient, do you follow the map? Okay, so the other 50%, uh, we as, you know, producers of software, basically, uh, we have no control over how people use the map. So all I'm saying is with Blackbird, and Blackbird is the best product I know on the planet that can help you to be and stay, become and stay uh, consistent by managing the trades as effectively as possible with lightning speed. I mean, think about it. Uh, First time in history, retail traders have the same power as the big guys in the skyscrapers. Uh, and that's thanks to shark indicators. Let's not forget, the, forget that at the end of this presentation. So with Blackbird, you have, you have power in your hand, which was unimaginable in just a few years ago. And of course, Bloodhound is in the background doing what it's doing for us. All right, so consistency is ensured by shark indicators products. Uh, the methodology is ensured by Remex products, hopefully. And if you add yourself to it, your consistency and your dedication, then, uh, well, you finish the sentence for yourself. Okay. No, there will be no real money in the room and there will be no real money in the videos. That's the short answer. I'm not even sure I'm legally... Uh, entitled to do that in Canada, uh, no real money. This is about education. We are a software education company, basically. We're not um, commodity advisors or investment advisors. Okay, um, so thanks very much. Let me let me hand it over to Ty. So Ty, if you can hear me, please. Uh, Take it over, and uh, I'd like to, again, thank you all for joining us today. I hope you have something to take away from this, and if you're interested in our products, either go on a trial, send me an email that you're in, you want to keep the preferred price and the discount price, special price, and uh, you can go ahead and jump into it and buy it if you have been on a trial already. I know many people have uh, gone on the trial already, so all right. Good luck in your trading business. Thank you very much. And Ty, back to you. All right, Ferenc, uh, thanks again for taking the time and uh, presenting today. I know this uh, Shark audience always enjoys having you in the webinar circuit. Um, if you guys have any other questions uh, for Ferenc, just go ahead and send those to support at remic.ca. Uh, any questions for Shark Indicators, uh, as always, support at sharkindicators.com. So I uh, thank you again, Ferenc. Thank you, traders, for tuning in. Um, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And see you guys soon. Bye-bye.